Give me your initial reaction. Initial reaction. Your initial reaction to hearing that recreational use, recreational marijuana, recreational use was going to be legal, was going to be legalized here in Michigan. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> you didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. Well, there is legal recreational marijuana in Michigan, and ready or not, Ohio now has to make its own decision about recreational cannabis use. A big factor Ohio voters will have to consider is the potential economic impact legal weed would have. So tonight, News 5 investigator Jonathan Walsh examines Michigan's operations, Ohio's tax plans, and those who oppose the idea altogether. <laughs> The investment is there. It creates jobs, gets money movement through for the state as well. Dylan Steiner is a regular cannabis user who's happy to see that legal recreational marijuana in Michigan keeps expanding. Especially the products that come in are crazy. They are, you would never expect them. Doing this ain't cheap. <laughs> it's not, no, I mean, honestly, yeah, right? this, this project costs us probably close to $5 million. Wally Manjo sells those products at his dispensary, Nature's Remedy in Ferndale. We redeveloped the entire site for a new construction because we wanted to make sure that uh, we build from ground up so people see something different and improve into a real estate. Other cannabis operations have taken over industrial and commercial buildings that haven't been used in a really long time. And that's a problem in Michigan and Ohio. We're, we're, you know, Rust Belt's not a, a term for no reason, right? Brett Gelbord is a Michigan attorney specializing in the cannabis industry. Over 33,000 people employed in the cannabis industry statewide right now, and those are good jobs. They're good paying jobs, they're steady work. So here in Michigan, tens of millions in taxes collected from marijuana are going to cities and counties. Tens of millions are coming to school districts. Tens of millions are helping Michigan roads. Every city and every municipality and even counties are having struggles with paying their bills, especially now with the rate of inflation has really hit everybody's wallet. Hazel Park, and Michigan Mayor here. Mike Webb says its marijuana money goes to police, fire, and other city employees. It's helped us shore up our pension obligations to our former employees that have retired here. In Ferndale, City Manager Joseph Gacho says its cannabis tax money goes into the general fund. During COVID, Ferndale's business taxes were in flux, and it was good to have that marijuana money. It ended up being a very helpful backfill to offset some of those disruptions, those economic disruptions. Last year, Michigan saw $1.8 billion in overall cannabis sales. This year, it's projected to be $3 billion. So at 10%, that means $300 million in revenue. And get this, at a dispensary near the Ohio-Michigan border. 50% to 60% of our customer base is from the Ohio region. So is Ohio missing out? Regulating the sale of marijuana for adults has been successful in just about every state. Tom Heron is the spokesperson for the Ohio Coalition to Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol. He says 25% of Ohio cannabis sales tax money would go to drug prevention, 36% to municipalities allowing marijuana sales, and 36% to something called the Social Equity and Jobs Fund. People with a social or economic disadvantage can apply for special considerations. There are 50 uh, dispensary licenses and 40 new cultivator licenses that will be issued with a preference to social equity applicants. It's a super bad deal uh, for Ohioans. State Senator Mark Romanchuk from Northeast Ohio is on the Senate Finance Committee. He and some other legislators say issue two only benefits a few greedy investors and a 10 percent sales tax is too low, pitiful. He tells us the Social Equity and Jobs Fund goes right back into the cannabis industry itself and not to Ohio. And you have the industry writing the laws and the rules. Uh, they're going to do it in a way that benefits them. The Social Equity and Jobs Fund will also encourage diversity hiring and studying criminal justice and bail reform. White folks and people of color use marijuana at the same rates. But we know that enforcement falls disproportionately. If we wanted to help people, I think putting some of that money towards education or food insecurity or housing would be a much better way to spend it. All things to think about as early voting is already underway in Ohio. I'm News 5 investigator Jonathan Walsh.
eye-opening. Here are the numbers. An Ohio State University study projects Ohio's tax revenues for marijuana could be anywhere from $276 million to $403 million in year five after legalization. Got much more from our series, Marijuana in Ohio, coming up next week. So you have the information you need before you head to the polls to vote on issue two. Hmm. Jonathan Walsh, that's a lot of work. Good stuff. Good stuff. See, what I'm going to do is wait, yeah. and then when the dispensary is open, I'm going to put up a McDonald's and a snack shack <laughs> right near. We're going to clean up, man. Mm -hmm.